Dull to exciting with just four tools is our topic today on this Luminar Coffee Break. And we have a special feature guest starting now. Hello, everyone. So we do have our special guest today. He's a retired project manager who specialized in imaging. And in his retirement, he's gravitated towards photography. And he's here today to show us how he edits a landscape photo with just four tools. Please welcome the very talented Carl Peterson. Hey, Carl. Hey, Vanelli. Thank you for that great introduction there. So yeah, I, uh, I am a casual photographer now who uh, quite often goes out on uh, uh, family trips and such. And when we do family trips and things, we can't always choose the time and the scenes that we want to photograph. We just have to take advantage of what we can. So I'd like to demonstrate to you how I take some of these casual landscapes that don't always... Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. Unmute, Carl. I thought you I'm sorry it. about that. Yeah, can we just cut it in with me starting? Yeah, no, we're good, you're good. Well, to do a kinetic, okay. So hi everybody, my name is Carl Peterson. As uh, Thanks for that great introduction, Vanelli. Um, sometimes when we go out and do photography uh, on trips and such, we don't get to choose exactly the time of day or the weather or conditions like that. So I'd like to show uh, you today how I take some of those not so bright pictures that we capture during those times and make them more exciting using just four simple tools using Luminar Neo. So let me go ahead and share my screen with you. And uh, I have a photo here today that I took in Fort Ludlow, Washington. It's overlooking the Puget Sound uh, towards Whidbey Island. And unfortunately, even though it was a, a morning photograph, I got a little later than I wanted to. So I didn't quite get my sunrise. And as you can see, it was overcast and, and somewhat dull. So let me show you how we can quickly edit this and make a better photograph out of it. One of the first things you might want to do when you're using uh, raw images, a raw format image from your camera, is to use Develop Raw. Um, you can go in and set the camera profile for your camera, so it'll do a little bit better job of converting the colors and such for you. Typically, you'll go down and you'll select Adobe Standard, and that will select the profile for your camera. Um, you may have other profiles for your cameras. You can see my D90 here. I have things like landscape and vivid and portrait. So choose the profile that works for you the best. Um, if you don't see your profile, Luminar Default actually does a very good job. In fact, for my particular camera, I can barely tell the difference between the two. So go ahead and I, I select this. In this particular case, you can see that my picture is quite dull. It's, it's almost monotonic with, you know, grays and blues, a little bit of purple. So I want to go ahead and add a little bit of drama to this. So I'm going to use the Smart Contrast tool here in Develop. I'm going to start pulling that up. You see it's making, you know, the tones a little darker as they go higher and higher, but it's adding contrast and look. So I'm going to back this off a little bit to say, oh, I, I don't know, I kind of like it about maybe right here. So you can see I've already added a little bit to this. I've brightened up some of my reflections. I've darkened and made some of the clouds a little bit more moody and that type of thing. Whenever I'm shooting landscapes, I will almost always go to the landscape tool. And I like to apply dehaze. Dehaze will pull down the blue tones, and our eyes interpret that as being a sharper picture when we do that. So let's go ahead and pull this down, or pull the uh, dehaze up a little bit, and that'll start removing some of the blues from my image, and it'll start making it quite orange. If I go very extreme, you'll see it's going to make it very, very yellowish. And in this particular case, I'm going to set dehaze up somewhere around here. I, I think that just gives a more pleasing, uh, sharper look. But I did shoot this in the morning, and I really do want to emphasize these golden tones that were starting to come out. So I'm actually going to boost those up using the golden hour tool. Now, the golden hour tool is going to add those rich oranges and yellows and such. So we're going to go ahead and push up, 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 up. That might be a little too much because I do want to keep that overcast moody look. So maybe about here, I would say. So now you can see 
I've reduced the blues. I've given a less, less hazy look to the image. I boosted up my golden hour to give me a little bit of that morning look. And we have just a little bit better image. Now, the water is very flat in this image, and I'd like to add a little more emphasis to that. I could use the detail tools, or I could use Structure AI. In this case, I'm going to use Structure AI. That'll kind of peak up the blacks and make the features in the water look better. I'm going to push up, 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 up. I could go way up to 100, you look, and my, my water looks too crunchy. So I'm going to back it off a little bit to about 80-ish here. Um, maybe a little bit less, actually. I want a little less crunch. But the texture isn't quite right. So I'm going to go ahead and boost it. And that's going to make the smaller details have a little more oomph in my, my structure. And I don't want to do too much. And I'm going to let you see a preview. So here's without the structure. You can see it's a little bit blurry, a little bit flat. And then I'm going to release and let you see the full image. Wow. So now I have this very moody, textured image. Um, and I'm not going to count this one as a tool. I'm going to make a global change, and I'm going to use Crop. Um, we could use Crop AI here, but I'm just going to go and make a simple one to pull it up so I lose that bottom bush and some of the side stuff. And we're done. We've improved the image in just four edits, including the crop. Because crop is a global tool, it won't show up in your edits. Whenever you use a raw format image, develop raw will always appear as the first uh, step in your Luminar Neo, no matter what. So there you go. And because I get four tools in the list, I'm going to do one more thing for you. I noticed that uh, I had a dust bunny up here in the upper part today. so. Uh, let's go ahead and remove that dust spot. And you can see the AI is now scanning the image. It's looking for vintage dust spots. Nice. Gone. Four tools and done. We've gone from a very dull, very hazy picture to something with a little more drama. And now you can take this image even further if you want and apply additional tools. But here you go. From doll to oh. a little more exciting. In just Girl, that's tools. awesome. I, I like how you added about the um, dehaze tool. And I think that's where your expertise in imaging comes in. When you, when you mentioned the dehaze tool, uh, remove, you said remove some of the blues? Or it yeah, it tends to blues. tone down. It tones down the blues. Our eyes tend to see blues as hazy. Um, and so, yeah, it just add a little more atmosphere. Yeah. And you know, it was funny, after you mentioned that a while back, I started to use that in even my portraits when there wasn't that much haze in the image, but that sky had a little too much of the bluish tint to it. You know, um, I tried the dehaze, and uh, again, it wasn't meant for that particular image, but it works. So like you said, some of these, some of these tools will work on different images. You just have to experiment with it. Awesome right. job. All right. Well, All hey, right, Vanelli, that's it. So thank you. Thank you so much, Carl. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Please stick around because Carl has extra bonuses he wants to show you. And we have the Ask Me Anything segment. Well, guys, I'll see you at the next Coffee Break.